Welcome back to part 14 of this OC story. Your guys' votes help me to decide what happens next, and then I improvise my way through the rest. Let's dive in where we left off. And you sadistic lot voted for it to get bad in the last video. Although to be fair, your other option was worse, so less sadistic than I thought. Let's dive in. The wanted criminal prince says he may have a plan. Erasmus sets down his drink, thinking. The palace might be the best place to find out who sent those assassins after us. I mean, well, it feels a little like an organised hit, does it not? And anyone who can pay for, well, four assassins to go after the royal family, I, I just can't help thinking that they must have, well, one, a lot of money, and two, perhaps a vendetta of some kind? Yeah, Darrow agrees. I reckon probably someone who knew you, or at least knew your movements. They knew where you were going to be and when. Even the members of the public didn't know that. Yes. So, the palace, then. Aye, the palace. And I reckon I can get in contact with the man who hired me, too. A guy named Lumens. Big shot in this area. Don't know how much information he'll give me, but it's worth a shot. He might, might tell me who hired him, or... I don't know. Give us a few pointers, I guess. Darrow also thinks about the assassins, the three that were taken prisoner all those months ago. I reckon they might be able to give us some more information too. They're probably in the dungeons, right? So sneaking down there could get some answers. They might talk to me anyways, if they know who I am or what I am. So, yeah. Head off to the palace then? Uh, I don't think that will be possible just yet. Why not? Erasmus explains that the palace will currently be on severe lockdown. It's tradition, he explains. Once a monarch has died, the entire palace, its staff, everyone living there, the royal family particularly, must stay in mourning for six months and not let anyone in or out. Then, after that, they have a coronation ceremony and they crown the new monarch. But sneaking in there right now will definitely not be possible. People send gifts, of course, but no one goes in. It would be more suspicious to try it now. The coronation day is our best bet to get inside. The doors are flung open and everyone is allowed in. In fact, it's expected. There wouldn't even be any sneaking involved. We could just walk straight in with everyone else. The assassin squeezed the prince's hand with a smile. Brilliant. All right, so when's coronation day? Does the paper say? Yes, it says it's in... Three weeks? Well, that gives us time to plan, I suppose. Yeah. I'll try to make contact with Lumens and, uh, we'll work out what we're doing on... Darrow, we're going to need money. Money? Why? Well, anyone, anyone at all can get into the main courtyard of the palace. Everyone's allowed in. There are foods and stalls and entertainment, drinks, music, and then everyone can watch the king come out on the balcony after the coronation. Yeah? And? Well, if we want to get into the palace, the main palace, and sneak down into the dungeons or, well, listen to anyone's conversations, we're going to need to dress the part. We can't just wander in there, they'll be looking. We have to look like we belong. So we're gonna need... Yes, we're going to need quite fancy clothing. I imagine that could be rather expensive and, um, well, my funds are running. So low that, uh, well, this, this drink is actually the last thing I can afford. Uh, yeah. Darrow starts pulling out his own pockets. Yeah, I think booking the room tonight was the last of mine too. Alright, so we'll just get a job then. Give us something to do in the meantime, I guess, and then uh, we can use the money to buy. And he says the next word through somewhat gritted teeth. Fancy fucking clothes. The assassin scrubbed at his face with the palm of his hand, thinking, Well, can probably get us some jobs on the black market. You up for it? Won't exactly be legal shit we'd be doing. You sure you wanna? Erasmus smiled and squeezed Darrow's hand. I'll have you know, I am a wanted criminal, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, and you look it too. Oh shush, it's been a long time since I've had a proper bath. That's true. Tell you what, why don't you go upstairs and have one now? I'll go and uh, scout around and see if I can chat to Lumens. Might be able to bring back some information for you, and you can get squeaky clean. 
The prince agrees gratefully to this plan, and once they finish their food and their drinks, they head up to the room they've booked for the night. Darrow locks the door behind them, makes sure that Erasmus is settled, and then heads out by the window, but not before giving the prince a quick kiss goodbye. Then he's off across the rooftops, hood up, mask on, and scouting around for the place he remembers meeting Lumens all those months ago. He tiptoes over the rooftops until he reaches the place. But there is no place. Just a ruin at the end of the street. Burned. Burned all the way to the ground. And ransacked, that much is clear. Torn apart several months previously by the looks of it. By the looks of the rats, at least. Darrow is concerned. He picks through the remnants, but so many others have done the same thing before him that he finds nothing. Nothing of interest, nothing of use. So, he returns to the tavern. He comes in deftly through the window, and alights sitting on the sill. He watches the prince in the bath. Erasmus leans over the tub to smile at him. Any news? No. The whole place is burnt to the ground. Burnt to a frickin' crisp. I don't know what's going on, but I don't like it. Well, perhaps we can ask around about Lumens as well? The assassin nods, slipping into the room properly and locking the window behind him. He sinks down to sit with his head leaning back against the tub. He listens to the water splashing as the prince washes, and then a hand comes and rests gently against his cheek. They sit comfortably like that for another long moment, until the bath water is stone cold, and the prince jumps out, and they go to bed for the night. The next day, dressed as dishevelled and criminal-like as they possibly can, Darrow leads them, with his mask firmly back on, to a grungy old blacksmith's forge. When they arrive, he heads over to one of the workers, telling them, We're heading south side. Is the road open? The worker nods. Aye, road's clear. Erasmus is bemused but intrigued. He follows as Darrow beckons him further into the shop. They head through the very back, down a corridor, through a narrow black doorway, and down, under the ground. A tight spiral staircase dug into the rock and stone. It goes down and down and keeps going down. Occasional torches sit in brackets, casting long shadows. Erasmus follows Darrow and asks, Was that a job? Are we hired? Darrow laughed. Nah, that was making sure there's no guards around so we can get down here. Down where? The black market. The prince grabbed Darrow's hand, a look of utter delight and confusion on his face. Wait... You mean to tell me the black market is a real place? Darrow blinks. Yeah, why? What do you think it was? Notice board out front of a tavern? Newspaper? No, I believed it was metaphorical. Erasmus really was delighted. That is how it has always been explained. In life and in stories, to sell something on the black market meant to sell it illegally or in criminal circles, not literally in a... Oh, wow! Darrow had pushed aside a high-hung dark curtain. They'd reached the bottom. It revealed an archway which opened out into a vast underground space. It must have been the size of a small village. There was music, chatter, lanterns in every colour of the rainbow, and row upon row of stalls and shop fronts. Some were proper buildings with upper floors, some mere blankets thrown on the ground bearing their wares. There were shouts and calls from those selling things, and shouts and calls back from those looking for whatever they were searching for. The place had clearly been built up upon over and over, each row wrapping round the previous, making a sort of zigzagging labyrinth of a market. The Black Market! Darrow introduced them, catching Erasmus by the waist and encouraging him through the curtain. One of them, anyways. This is the biggest, or so they claim. Hold on, there are more? The prince was gleeful as he stared around. Of course, 
Every country's got them. Usually the main ones in the capital, but there's a bunch more all over the place. They went in. Erasmus looking at every stall in eager interest. Darrow was lightly browsing here and there, stopping to inspect weapons and eye up the hidden blades built into forearm braces. A look of longing etched all across his face as he put them down again. The price tag certainly far, far out of reach. There were body parts, organs, all out on display. Strange foods, potions, banned ingredients, definitely banned ingredients. People were offering forgeries, furniture, cursed items, enchanters offering spells, weapons of every description, bows, arrows, handheld crossbows, daggers, swords, concealed blades, and so much more. There were clothes too, and places claiming to be able to clean any stain, places offering to burn anything you gave them for a fee, cloaks, hoods, boots, gloves, masks too. Erasmus considered buying one for himself, but put a pin in the idea for now. They begin to ask around, Darrow going first, Erasmus listening in. He asked about what had happened to Lumens. Two traders nearby shook their heads. They say it was a shitty thing what happened. His whole supply chain got busted. Someone tipped off the crown guards and they raided his base. The pair move on and ask a group of gossiping people sitting by a makeshift cafe. There, they learn, the rumour is that Lumen survived but went to ground, keeping a low profile, injured but alive and pissed off. By this point, they'd reached near the centre of the market, and Darrow took them over to a large stall. It was built into a one-storey building. This is it. Place to ask for work. As they approached, the woman manning the counter looked up. She was vast, a hulk of a woman, looking as though she could take on anyone and anything, probably punch a hole in the sun while she was at it. Darrow stopped at the counter. We're here for work. You got anything? She eyed him up and down, then turned her gaze to Erasmus. And who's this? she asked. Eri, the prince replied. He's green, the woman observed. Darrow shook his head. Just keeps a clean fit. He's sharp. The woman rubbed her chin, but relented. Well, there's a job needs doing ASAP. Simple enough. A root and rat job. Interested? Darrow nodded. The woman pulled out a folder and produced an envelope with two copies of the same instructions. Handing one to the assassin, she asked, What name do you want on the agreement? Cast. Alright. Drop off here when you're finished. 10% to the house, standard contract. Done? Done. The woman held out her hand. Erasmus expected Darrow to shake it, but he did not. Instead, he slapped it with the palm of his own, then the pair bumped fists and finally took each other by the wrist and shook once downward. Seeming satisfied, the woman packed the folder and the envelope away again. Darrow took the opportunity to ask, Heard about Lumens? Any word? The woman looked grave at that. Last I heard he was heading to Belgoth, looking to get help in to hunt down the fucker what sold him out. Any idea who? Not down here. But Lumens was pissed even before the raid. Said someone blunted out on a contract. Took the coin and scarped. Lumens couldn't find the guy, nor hide nor hair. So apparently he called in reinforcements to find the fucker. In Belgoth? So that would be Maximus, aye. Darrow swallowed. Any idea what the contract was? The woman nodded, enjoying the gossip. An ace of spades hit. Big one. My guess, there was meant to be another guy on that royal job. They caught the three, but there never was a fourth. I reckon Lumens had four aces dealt, but one never showed. Fuck. Damn right. I'd be willing to bet Lumens is going after the blunter. And it won't be just his money back he'll be wanting. Darrow nodded, unable to say anything else. Pocketing the paper, 
they both left. He was walking fast as they exited the market. Erasmus managed to catch up, walking close beside him, offering Darrow his pinky quietly. The assassin took it in his own as they hurried away and out of the market, up into the forge and then out onto the streets. They decide to head for the address on the paper to check it out, and Darrow finally managed to speak properly as they walked. We have to be so, so careful. Fuck, shit, fuck, Lumens thinks I blunted out on him. Fuck, fuck, of course, of course, no one saw me. No one knows I was there. Shit! Erasmus squeezed his finger. And of course he got Maximus in. Fuck! The guy crossed the whole damn country border just to come after me. That's why he was here. Fuck! Erasmus felt guilty at once. Darrow, I am so... But Darrow put a hand over the assassin's mouth, pressing him against the closest wall. Don't. Don't you dare be sorry. We'd both be dead if you didn't hide me. Or worse... It was true. They both knew it. Some things were worse than death. Chained in a dungeon, for one. Living a desperate, burning unhappiness, for another. Darrow spoke again, and it was soft and kinder this time. It don't matter. It's good we know. We just gotta watch our backs. In and out, do this job. In and out of the palace. It'll be fine. We got this. Yeah, Eri? The prince reached for the hand at his lips and interlinked their fingers. I'll do anything I can. Darren nodded, a smile flashing through the fabric mask. I like Eerie, by the way. It's cute. Suits you. The prince flushed. Hidden beneath his hood, the tips of Darrow's ears grew pink too. As they began walking again, Eerie asked about the handshake he'd seen. Ah. Oh. Fuck yeah. There's a bunch of stuff you probably should know now we're in this. Darrow explained that it's a handshake used to sign a contract, sealed by bond, not the written word. Signatures could be forged, and half the criminal underworld couldn't spell properly, so this was created to be the alternative. He promised to teach it to Erasmus. The prince then asked, And what is a rat and root job? Ah, rat and root... It means get in and steal. Which is what we're doing. Yep. And what about, uh, Ace of Spades? That means killing. Assassination, usually. Jack of Spades means disposing of a body. Queen of Spades means grave robbing. Is there a King of Spades job? Yeah. What does that mean? The assassin shot the prince a sideways, apologetic sort of look. He was smiling, but he said... Trust me, you don't want to know. And then, as they rounded a corner, they arrived. The address of the place that they were to rob. And this is where I'm going to leave it. And instead of having a vote, this time I want you guys to pick what kind of place are they going to steal from. It can be a simple thing, you want it to be a house, a factory, you just want it to be big, small, old, young. (laughs) Can a dwelling be young, I guess? So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for getting involved. I love you all and I will see you very, very soon. And also, happy Halloween.